What's going on guys? Today we are inside of Affinity Publisher V2 and in today's tutorial I want to show you how you can easily put together a kids reward chart for any of you guys that may want to create one of these and print that from home. So if this is something you would like to learn then let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that you want to do when you open up Affinity Publisher is just choose a correct canvas size that you want for your project. And this type of project, I recommend you use this A4 size right here. Then once you've gone and selected that, what we also want to do is come down to where it says pages and just turn off that face in pages as we only need the single page. And we want to be working in landscape that we got here. So if you guys find that you've got this in portrait with these buttons just up here, all you've got to do is swap them around to landscape. Then quickly making my way back to the layout tab, I just want to double check that my DPI is set to 300 as that is going to give you the best print quality. So with that now set up, all we've got to do is hit the create button. So here we are inside of the Affinity Publisher workspace and today's tutorial is recorded in Affinity Publisher V2. However, if any of you guys are still running V1, then you can still follow along with today's tutorial. So what I want to do first of all with my kids reward chart is bring in some images that I may want to use in the background. And just to be a little bit quicker with a tutorial, I will use a stock library which is built into Affinity Publisher. So if I head over to the left hand side of my page, Page, I can find my stock library right here. If any of you guys don't see this stock library and you also want to use this, then all you need to do is go up to the window menu and just head down towards the bottom to where it says stock and just make sure that you have that checked. Then you will also have access to the stock library. So first of all, I want to find myself a background image. So inside of this search box right here, I'm just going to maybe type in cartoon background and see what I can find. Then it's just a case of scrolling through some of these images to find something that you may like. And I'll be quick with this and I'll grab that one right there, drop that into my canvas. And at the moment, this is far too big for the canvas. So what I'm going to have to do is zoom out using command or control minus, and then just resize that using these nodes on the corners and go ahead and let that snap into place and just fill the entire canvas with your image. So something like that will be fine. I'll drag the tree in a little bit more into the picture and then I'll hit command or control zero to fit to screen. And now that is our background complete. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lock this layer so I can't disturb that when I start adding more content onto this. So if I head over to the right hand side and I just select my layer, if I hover over here towards the right hand side, you can see we have that padlock just appear. We can go ahead and turn that on to make sure it locks the layer. Or alternatively, you can do it with that padlock right there. So moving on, I think I'm going to bring in a couple of more images just to make up the design to make it look a little bit better. So coming back up here again, I'm going to maybe write in kids cartoon. Then just like before, make your way through some of these images to find some that you may like and drag them into your design. So what I do want to quickly mention is that I recommend you guys have this vector option check right here. That then is going to give you these images about the backgrounds. And this is only available inside of the Pixabay website. It doesn't work on Pexels. So just make sure that you choose Pixabay and you have that vector option checked. So moving on, I'll find a couple more images, maybe these kids right there. I'll go ahead and drag that in. And once again, I'm going to resize that to make sure it fits the design just a little bit better. And what I want to do with this, I think, because I'm going to have it over here on the right hand side of the screen, I want the hand to be on the opposite direction. So I'm going to come up here to the top menu bar to where we have the option to flip that horizontal. And now I'll start dragging that over into place and just put that roughly where I want it to go. Maybe make that just a little bit bigger. And I think I'm going to bring a couple more of these images in a little bit later on once we go ahead and start putting the reward chart together. So for now, what I want to do is head over to the left hand side and I'm going to grab the artistic text tool and just drag this out to a rough size that you would like for your text. Then inside of here, we're just going to give us a random name for the reward chart. So I'll maybe use Sarah. Then what I want to do next is select all of this text with command or control A and I want to go and change the font. So I'm going to head up to the left hand side inside of my fonts menu and I'm going to go for maybe this impact just to make it a little bit more bold. Then next I want to give this a different color. I'm going to go and make this white. So heading over to the right hand side color wheel, I'm just going to go ahead and adjust that to be white. Then making my way back over to the left hand side, I'm going to grab my move tool and I'm just going to snap this into the center and put it roughly where I want it to go and maybe make that a little bit smaller. 
And just to make sure this is centered in the middle of the image, I'll go ahead and I'll use this option right here, which is align center. So that's not looking too bad at the moment, but what I do want to do next, just to make this name stand out a little bit better, is add a drop shadow to that. So if we make our way over to the right hand side, just down here in our layer section to where we have the effects panel, go ahead and select that. Then inside of here, we are going to choose outer shadow. And all we're going to do is change the radius and the offset. So I'm going to put maybe 10 pixels on the radius and 10 pixels on the offset. And I'll go ahead and close that. And that doesn't look too bad. So moving on, I'm going to head back over to the left hand side once again. I'm going to grab the table tool. And the way that this works is once we start clicking on our background and we start dragging this out, the more we drag over to the right hand side, it's going to start adding additional columns to our table. And if we pull back over to the left hand side, it's going to start removing columns. And if we drag up and down with our mouse, that will start adding or removing rows inside of our table. So what I'm going to do real quick is just make this as big as I want it to roughly be. And then I'll come in here and start adjusting all of these individual cells. So straight away, we need to adjust the number of rows that we have as I don't think we're going to need 29. So what I'll do is I'll grab these little arrows right here at the bottom and I'll start dragging this up to the rough number that I'm going to use for this design. So I'm going to go with roughly around seven. And with our columns, which is the A, B, C, D, etc., we're going to use these for our days of the week. And we're going to start on column B. So that's going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we can go ahead and we can get rid of the I just by dragging that over. As column A over here, we're going to use as our job list. So before I start adjusting this to the sizes that we need, what I want to do first of all is just select anywhere inside of this cell and just drag that all the way over so we can highlight the entire table. Then what I want to do with this is I want to give it a white background. So if I make my way over to the left hand side inside of my table menu, I'll have the option right here to change the fill. So I'll go ahead and make that white. And if any of you guys don't see your table menu over here, then the way you'd access that is once again up to the window menu, go down towards the bottom to where you have table and just make sure you have that table option checked. Then you'll also have access to all these parameters. So now we have the white background. What I want to do next is just make this a little bit bigger to the rough size I'm happy with. So we can do that even manually with adjusting the width and height of these cells right here. Or we can go straight in and grab this node right there and start dragging that down to be the rough size that you are going for. So I'm going to go for something roughly about that size and just drag that a little bit more over to the right hand side. And with our row at the top here, number one, what I want to do is make this row a little bit smaller as this is going to contain the days of the week. So the way that we'll make this smaller is by simply dragging in between this one and the two till we see these arrows appear and just start pulling that up to make that as big as you would like. I'll leave that roughly around eight millimeter and we may come and adjust this in just a moment, but for now we'll leave it the way it is. So what we want to do now is put the text inside of our cells, which is going to be for the job list and the days of the week. So first of all, inside of here, I'll write in job list followed by the days of the week. So I'll speed this up a little bit so you guys don't have to see me type all this in. Okay, so that is my days of the week now complete. So what I wanna do next is I want to center all of this text in the middle of these cells. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this entire top row. Then I'm gonna make my way back over to the left hand side inside of our table menu. And just down here with the alignment, I'm gonna change that to be in the center. Then inside of our text menu, just at the top here, I also want to change the alignment from the left over to the center. Then next, I want to change the font just to look a little bit better than the Arial that we've got. So I'll go ahead and change that to maybe this one right here. OK, so what I want to do next is I'm just going to pre fill some random jobs inside of this column A. And this is completely up to you guys whether you want to do this or not. You can, of course, print this completely blank. And if you laminate this and you've got a board marker, you can just write in any jobs that you have and whether or not they've been completed on all the individual days. Then come the end of the week, you can just simply wipe all that away and start again. But just to make the design a little bit better, I do want to come in here and just write out a few random jobs. So the first one being maybe just make bed. And once again, I'll just speed up the video through this and I'll come back to you guys in just a moment. 
Okay, so I've now pre-filled all of this with just some random jobs such as make bed, brush teeth, wash breakfast dishes, etc. So what I want to do next is I'm going to select all of these cells from number two all the way down to number seven. And just like before, I want to have this centered in the middle of the cell. So making our way back over to the left hand side, we'll go ahead and choose that alignment option and just have that in the center. And we'll do the same just up here inside of our text options. Just make sure that we align that in the center as well. Then I think I want to make this font here just a little bit smaller than what we've got at the top. So at the moment we have 12 and I'm going to change that to roughly around 10. And of course change that font to match the other one. So it's that one right there. And looking at this, I think I just want to make this top row just a little bit smaller. So I'll go ahead and just adjust that just to make that just that little bit smaller, roughly around that size. Then what else we can do with this is we can kind of color code it just to make it look a little bit more eye pleasing. And the way that we would do that is by selecting a cell at a time. So if I go ahead and I select this job list one first, I'm just going to start pulling away over to Monday. Then I'm going to pull that back just so it selects that one cell. Then we'll head back over to the left hand side. And with our fill option, we're just going to give us any kind of random color that you may want to use. So I'll go ahead and I'll look for maybe a light brown, for instance. And then we'll just do the same thing across all of this. So we'll go ahead and we'll just select that second cell. Go ahead and give that a different color on the fill. Maybe with this one, I'll go for a green. And I'll do that across the entire design and then come back once this is finished. Okay, so just to be quick, these are the colors that I chose. But of course, you guys can choose any colors that you like inside of here. Another thing that we can do is we can go and change the color of the font either on a single cell or across the entire row, that is up to you. I'm just going to go ahead and change this one right here to be the color white. But as for the rest of that, I think I'll leave it the way it is. So this isn't looking too bad at the moment. One thing that I do want to do is I want to put a drop shadow on our chart as well, just like we did up here on Sarah's reward chart. So the quick way to do that is if we just head over to the right hand side layer section, you can see that we have this effects button right there which contains our drop shadow. If we just select that and we drag that with our mouse and drop that onto our chart, then that is going to copy that exact same drop shadow that we had on the Sarah's reward chart. So moving on, I think what I want to do next is maybe just color code a couple of these rows just to kind of separate those. So first of all, I'm going to select this row number three and select that entire row. Then I'm going to hold down command or control on my keyboard. That way I can select additional rows. So I'll go ahead and I'll grab that number five and I'll do the same thing with number seven. And now I can change all of these colors at the same time. So I'll go back over to the left hand side and I'll go in here and choose maybe a light blue, for instance, something like that. And it's entirely up to you guys on the colors that you choose. But as a quick demonstration, this isn't looking too bad. So just like I said before, we could go ahead and leave all this completely blank. And if you guys laminate this after you print it, you can just write on that with your board marker and just erase all that once you've finished at the end of the week. But because I want to make my design just that little bit better, I think what I'm going to do inside of here is I'm going to put some emojis, maybe a happy face and a sad face. And on the Mac, the way that you do that is by going up to the edit menu on the top menu bar. And just down here, it says emoji and symbols. And I have the smiley face right here. So I'll select that one first. Then I'm going to put a space bar and then I'll go ahead and I'll insert the other one. So back up to edit down to emoji and symbols and I'll go for that sad face. Then what I'm going to do is select both of these and make them a little bit bigger. So I'll go ahead and adjust the size of that to roughly maybe 24. Then I'm just going to space that just a little bit more, maybe around that size. And sometimes you'll find if you want to center your emojis inside of your table menu, just like we did before with the alignment option, once we choose that, it might actually put them more towards the bottom. So what we need to do in that case is we want to go ahead and change the insets. So first of all, we want to unlink that. Then we just need to move from the bottom. So just adjusting your arrows, just move them up roughly to where it's going to be centered with that text. Then next, I want to make a copy of these emojis. So with my cell selected and highlighted, I'm going to hit Command or Control C to copy. Then I'll select this next cell and I'll go ahead and paste that in with Command or Control V. And I'm going to do that across this entire top row. Just keep pasting that into each one of these. And now we have this entire top row filled in. All we've got to do is make a copy of this entire row. So I'll go ahead and hit Command or Control C once again. Come down here, highlight this next row, hit Command or Control V to paste. 
and we can do that across each one of these and that is going to be a quick way of getting all of our emojis inside of our table so that step is now complete so what we want to do next is we just want to add a little box down here which is going to say what the kind of reward is at the end of the week so if we go up to the left hand side toolbar menu i'll grab myself another table tool and i'll just drag this out to the rough size i'm going for maybe something like that will be perfectly fine then with this number one row that we have up here i'm going to select all of this together and i'm going to right click on my mouse and i'm going to merge those cells so then all four of those become one and i'm going to do the same thing with the ones underneath it however this time around i'm going to select all of these then I'll go ahead and right click and merge cells. Then at the top here, what I want to do is I'm just going to write in something like my completed reward chart. So what I'm going to do now is select all of this text and I want to center that into the middle. Then I'll go and change that to be the exact same font that we have on our chart and just make that text that little bit smaller. And just like before, I'll select the entire table so we can give that a fill of white. And I just need to bring this text into the middle like we did before. So I'll go ahead and center that in the alignment. And of course, we can make this a little bit bigger on row one if you like. That's entirely up to you what size you would like to go with. And of course, either add or remove additional rows. So that should be perfectly fine for what I'm going for. And what I want to do next is just copy that drop shadow onto this as well. So back over to the right hand side, we're just going to drag and drop that effect. And then we'll just grab this and make sure that is centered in the middle of our document and just line that up roughly where you would like it to go. Then this is pretty much 99% done. All I really would do now is go back to my stock library and just bring a couple of more images in here just to fill it up and make it look a little bit more creative. So I'll drag that down to a rough size I'm happy with. Maybe put that there. And I'll grab this one here as well and maybe have him sat up there. So I'll make that a little bit smaller. Just place this somewhere around here, just so he's sat on the top of that. And just use my arrow keys just to fine adjust that a little bit. And maybe just one more animal down here, maybe that giraffe right there. Go ahead and drop that in. Resize that one as well to a rough size you are happy with. And you can, of course, start bringing in more images into this if you like. But as a quick demonstration, I think this looks really good. All you guys have to do is decide whether you want the emojis in here or whether you want this completely blank. If you do find you want it completely blank, just select all of those cells and hit delete and that will get rid of all of those. I'll just go ahead and bring those back real quick. And of course, you can create all of your own jobs that you have for your children and choose any different colors that you like inside of here. I did notice that once I copied all of these emojis into these different rows, it did remove the color blue that we had across the entire row. So we could go ahead and bring all that back if you want to. Just go back to your fill. And just give that the same color that we had before. Just do that across your entire row on number five and number seven. And remember, if you hold down command or control, you can select more than one row at a time and go and change that color. So it really is entirely up to you guys how you would like to design this. But that is it for today's tutorial. I hope you found this useful and you've learned something new. And I will see you in the next one.